Now you have to approve it. It's great. Oh my gosh. I know. Hold on. Oh shit. I didn't even do the right mic. Hold on. Here we go. Okay. Here we go. Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of the Say It Out Loud podcast. I know you love my sexy voice. You know, I, I honestly feel like I'm a lot hotter when I have a scratchy voice. I've been told this before. I don't know. It sounds like gritty, like I'm of the earth or something. But I just had a, a really beautiful... I'm of the earth? <laughs> That's our guest already. She couldn't contain herself. She couldn't contain herself. herself. You're like one of the funniest people I know. I couldn't contain myself. I couldn't contain myself. I know you can't contain yourself. Well, I was trying to say what happened was I was I had a boat party yesterday for my 40th. And, you know, we just had a really good time on the boat. I think I might have swallowed some lake water. You know, it's all that stuff. But I'm super happy to be here with my new friend. She's a new friend of mine, Angie. We've known each other for a few months. Uh, getting her to schedule anything is... <laughs> You've met me in the craziest months of my life. Usually it's not, but like moving here and then we're like, it's like, it's always freaking something. And I've realized that I need to just like get my life in order. Well, I don't even Your know. Your life is great. And you know what I appreciate about you, Angie, um, is that you don't put that, pro I, I don't actually, I don't know this. I could just be assuming that I know this about you, but like, you're not. You're not someone who's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I don't have the time or I'm sorry. Like, it's just, you are just who you are. And I appreciate that about you. Like, yeah, if it's going to take a month for us to schedule a hangout or a podcast, that's just the way it is. So, and I, I, I what I always appreciate about someone is that they are who they say they are. They're unapologetic about it. They're not trying to explain themselves to me. I don't need anyone. And I, I really value that about you. And I know you're, you're honest, which is why... I really, I wanted to have you on the Say It Out Loud <laughs> podcast. So thanks for being here. Oh, I'm so stoked. Yeah. You know what my problem is? I'm, I'm a little social butterfly. I'm too social. So I'm actually trying to be in a season where I actually get some work done because I did, oh. I never get work done then because I'm just hanging out with people all the time here in Austin because everyone's here. So I feel like I felt very overwhelmed and now I'm like kind of hermiting. And then I'm like, okay, I need to conserve some energy so I can like actually go be creative because I'm trying to like get into all this new creative stuff. But then I'm just with people all the time. So I'm actually like, it's I, I need to learn to like, have boundaries, but I don't have any. So I'm learning to have some. <laughs> well, because <laughs> I'll I, go I, to anything and everything. And then it's like, Angie, you didn't do shit this week because you've just been partying all week, you know? Well, it's boundaries <laughs> with ourselves. Like I have a teenager in me that could literally be 17. Like, you know, it's like a summer of graduating high school, going into college. You want it to be everywhere. That's yep. how I that's the vibe that I I get that. It's funny, even though my manuscript was due, I just I just submitted it June 1st. I socialized almost every single night of the week that my manuscript was due because balance, I needed to have that balance. So I appreciate you, you know, socializing, yeah. doing the damn thing, still getting out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow, that's exciting about your manuscript. Woo! Yeah, say it out loud. That's the name of the books. Every oh, I and, love that. And say those, it out loud. Yes, and for those of you listening, if you're not on the wait list, make sure you go to uh, vasavikumar.com forward slash say, uh, sorry, wait list, forward slash wait list to get on the wait list for the book. I'll put it in the show notes. I want to get right into it with you, Angie. Um, all right, so you ready? We're going to do some rapid fire. Ready is a lie. Let's go. By the, by, of course, yes, that is your motto. And I just want to say this to everyone listening. You know, everything's a fucking teachable moment on this podcast. Even with my format of these questions and what order I put these questions, I went through this process of like, is it right? Is it wrong? Is it? And I said, you know what? Just do it. Just put yeah. it out, see how it feels. So you're the second person now, Angie, that I've actually asked these set of questions to, and I'm still feeling it out and seeing, do I like this format? Do I like the order? And you're the perfect person to even just even yeah, being here because we're both creatives. And I, I know when we get into our creative mind, there's so much of that. Is this right? Is this wrong? And it's like, how do we even know if it's quote unquote right or wrong if we don't even try it? So thank you for being my guinea pig. Today. let's go yeah there is no right or wrong there's just not putting it out there which is the only failure so yes that is let's go okay so first question which you don't know any of these questions so this is great we'll get... all right what's something you've never been able to do well oh wow this is a 10 hour podcast or <laughs> <laughs> um cooking wow not yet not uh uh, details, strategy. Um, I am so right brained. It's ridiculous. I think, I don't even think I have a left brain, so I don't know where it is. I think when I was born, it's just like chunked it. Like it's not there. It's just like okay. a, it's just a hole. And then this is the, this is my brain. So I'm similar to you ultra creative, but then it's hard for me to, to bring that down tactically and say, okay, how does that actually, how do we actually do that? What does that actually look like? So 
I would say that's something I'm always working on. Yeah. Cooking organization, acts of service. Here's my thing. Yeah. My love language is like gifts or verbal. Like if you come over, I'm going to like give you some gummies or some gifts. Mm -hmm. I'm going I'm to send you a gift. I sent you a gift. Like that makes me so happy. I'm not very good at acts of service. Like I'm not going to, I'm not going to mow your lawn, but I'll send you some gifts. I'm not going to. Okay. Listen, I'm never going to be that person. If my friend has a baby to cook her food and bring it to her. <laughs> yeah. That's a big commitment. You could send her a gift. Maybe. Yes. I will buy you a massage. Yeah, that's buy you, better. That's better. You can always you order food. food, you know? Also about the cooking, I did go to cooking school. So if you ever need some help, I can help you. Shit, you're a comedian and a cook? I wow. went to plant-based culinary school here. Wow. Yeah, I can help. Cool. I can help. I love cooking. Okay, next oh. next question. But I just want to let you know I, I, I got you covered. Wow, All right. that's cool. What's something you think everyone should try at least once? <laughs> don't be dirty plug, plug, plug. why did my butt plugs something butt plugs appropriate you were gonna say butt plugs weren't you you feel the animal butt sex, you know okay Do um it. you know what butt sunning i did it this morning you just in your backyard open up open it up let the sun shine where it doesn't shine get those genitals some vitamin d i think everyone needs to do that and then i haven't done stand-up yet you have but I do believe, and I'm sure you can echo this, I think it quite possibly, whether you go up there and suck or you do great, it's probably one of the greatest forms of personal development. So I yeah. would say some sort of public speaking. I've done a lot of public speaking and every single time it's like that, that, that those butterflies in your stomach and the ability to stand up there and just still love yourself no matter what happens, I think is such a great skill to have and know that no matter what happens, you're not gonna die. So I would say butthole sunning, public speaking and stand up. <laughs> you know, I, I, my, I don't know why my mind just went there. It's like, what if my clit gets sunburned? I you might No, it is, is a real thing. You actually you can't do it too long. Especially in the beginning. <laughs> I mean, for me, girl, I'm pale. I'm like translucent. So for me to go out there, it would just turn into like a red lobstery little situation. So I got to go uh, slow, like two minutes. And then three minutes you gotta like let it it's like if you have a pale part of your body you can't just like blast the sun on it so you gotta maybe a little sunscreen i don't know <laughs> i love that you do this i remember you talked about this and i what i love about you and i want everyone you know if, if you if you are just meeting angie for the first time her podcast the angie lee show follow her on instagram at angie lee what i love about you angie is that you know you're in this industry of self-help personal growth the coaching industry and what i love about you is that you're not like everybody else that's honestly why i wanted to have you on because you're not like everybody else you're just, you're so different from everybody else and you you're like you you make it a point to be you and I, there's no part of you you know when i talk to you that i'm like oh she sounds like this person it's like no you you're you like i don't ever like associate you with someone else you know when you can like scroll through someone's Instagram or you can listen to them. You're like, oh, they kind of sound like a watered down version of this person. You're not a watered down version of anyone. You're just a first rate, oh. first class version of yourself. That's you're so nice. That's like my, that's like my biggest goal is to, mm -hmm. I call it owning your weird, but at the end of the day, I feel like that is the gift that mm -hmm. I want to, want to help people with, whether it's through, yeah, inspiration, comedy, wellness. Like I just want to be this, this vessel of like, just stop caring so much. And I think that Ironically, I still do care, obviously, but I just, it's, it's, it's exhausting to be inauthentic. And I found that out very quickly with a personal brand. So yeah, I, I like muted everyone in that similar space because I was like, what would I create? What do I think is funny? I'm not going to be this like stuffy, like go for your dreams, girl, like stuffy, boring personal development person who's just reading fucking Pinterest quotes all day. I'm like, I'm crazy and wild. And, and that's why I want to step more into comedy. Cause I don't like the, the, the serious personal development space. So I'm figuring out how to either merge it or leave it. Or I don't know, I'm in this interesting, weird space because so much of it's so cheesy to me that I'm like, if I read one more cheesy quote, that's like, go girl, chase after your dreams. It's like, God, I just, I must, I just, I must stick this pencil in my eyeball, you know? So I think, yeah, I hope that's my, that's my, my wish is that I can bring just realness. Cause I'm like, I've met some of these people in real life. They don't, that's not what they're like. Like just be who you are offline, online. Like be that same person, you know? It, so. it life is so, it's so much easier. It life is it's actually easier to be the same person. That's been a so goal of mine easy. always like for someone to meet me and be like, wow, you're literally the same person. It's like, yeah, I I prefer to be at one, like one with my, like so it, 
You don't, I already have so many fucking voices in my head. I don't have time to manage all my personalities. I just want to be one person, you know? <laughs> Right. It's like, I'm not like people are like, Oh, how do you, how do you be authentic? I'm like, this is not like it's a four step process. I don't have a course to sell you on authenticity. I just grab the phone and I just talk as if I'm FaceTiming a friend. I just go because what am I, what am I going to do? Be like, okay, be this type of person and then turn that off. And then it's, it's too weird for the amount of, of, of my life that I'm sharing and content. I just don't have room or time. Like you said, you can't, yeah. it'd be too hard to micromanage. So it's like giving less <laughs> craps, but also knowing that like, <laughs> People like that congruence. People like to feel like, oh, wow, you probably are like that in real life. People, people are smart now. Consumers are smart. They don't want to watch shit that they're like, mm, that's not that girl's life. Like, eh, that's very polished and fake. And she's doing it just to look cool. It's like, no, one. that's so social media, like 2014, you know, <laughs> like any relationship consistency builds trust. I always think about, I'm not dating anyone right now, but Listen, if you say you're going to text me at 630, text me at 630. Ta you know, be consistent. Call me when you... It's just that consistency. Be co be consistent in who yeah. you are. Okay, great. This Single man listening. Call her at 630, okay? Not yeah. 632. You better call her. No, you don't understand. Or if you're going to call me at 632, let me know why it's been two minutes late. Okay, next question. Next question. This is not the let's find Vasavi a man. No, or it, it, could, it could <laughs> Actually, it is. <laughs> it is. Okay. All right. Next question. Um, okay. Wow. Okay. This is going to be a good one. If you had to work on only one project for the next year, what would it be? Ooh, I could only work on one project. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It's like, hard. like business project, obviously, or life project. Like, is this gardening and shit and learning to cook? Or I, listen, you know what? You can interpret it however you want. It's one thing for the whole year. That's it. Okay. Well, you know, I guess what, what I want to step into next, and you're going to, you're going to like this one. I think you're going to prove is the project that I want to step into is I, I feel like a lot of, um, is creating comedic ads for brands. So a lot of brands, uh, obviously DTC direct to consumer brands, all the brands you see, I mean, huge ones, Nike, Lululemon, and then you've got like just smaller wellness brands and whatnot. A lot of them, if you scroll Instagram, you know, your scroll social, the ads are so boring. And so really wanting to, I don't know, a, a big dream might be to start like a small agency where I have different writers and we can, uh, different actors, right? Like friends that I know who can be in the videos, but creating funny <laughs> comedic ads. So I'm, I'm focusing on that this year. I really want to see what that could look like to work with some brands and, and, and basically be Harmon brothers, but way more affordable because there's a lot of people who'd love to do that, but they don't have a hundred grand, but they have like 20 grand and I could make them a bunch of videos, you know? So that's, that's like the, the next idea that I have. Okay, so thanks for saying I approve. Hashtag Vasavi approved. It's a thing. I want to say this. Your ad for My Soul CBD, by the way, y'all, if you need CBD in your life and learn how to focus, and, and you have so many different purposes for CBD, um, make sure you check out My Soul CBD, which Angie co-founded with her brother. Your brother's name is, um, is Mike. It Matt? No, Mike. Mike, exactly. And they have a beautiful Matt, whatever. <laughs> Matt, Mike. Mike, I'm so sorry, but they have a they, either one works. They have a company that they co-founded. I've actually tried Angie's My Soul CBD for Focus. I used it last week when I was doing my manuscript. But Angie, I've seen your ad for My Soul. You're like, all right, let's get to work, and then like all you know, squirrels and and I I watched this ad because I obviously you do a very good job of advertising My Soul, and I was like, did she write this? It's so funny. It's so entertaining because it's so real. Like, all right, let's light a candle sit down to work and then all of a sudden all the adhd comes oh my god i gotta do this oh i didn't I, you know i have this one sock missing somewhere and i gotta fold it up you know that's just how our brains work and when you just said that you'd like to help people with comedic ads i'm like oh that makes sense i don't I really mean think that's gonna be my future with my brand because i i mean i like i like podcasting but for me this is not I like being on podcasts, but it's actually not my favorite medium to express yeah. my creativity. I like short form video. I'm, I'm going to get more into TikTok. I really like expressing and doing skits and stuff. So yeah, yeah, I'm like, you know, there's so many brands who will pay for this and they need, whether I'm, I'm the actor in it or I hire out actors and I'm just the writer and producer, like who knows, maybe that will be my journey in the next few years. I mean, I, I don't know, but it's been really interesting to sit with this and, uh, yeah, because I think there's just so many brands who need it. Cause most brands are like, dude, we're boring and nobody on their marketing team knows how to be funny. So, you know, <laughs> I, I want to highlight, um, for everyone listening, something about Angie here, which I think it like, 
we all need to give ourselves permission to evolve. Okay, so you have your podcast, you've hosted live events, you've spoken at live events. Uh, were you ever a coach? Like, did you ever help people? Like, Yeah, that's how it started in like 24, 15, 16. I was doing like wellness blog to then business marketing coaching. And then it kind of like went to just podcaster, influencer, speaker, live events. And now it's like comedy, wellness, influencer. It's like kind of just making all of these different little fucking pivots. <laughs> That, but what I want to point to everyone is that you like life is not linear. And in fact, if you're if you're in your business right now and you're kind of feeling like, oh, I'm feeling stuck or whatever, like that is a part of evolving, right? Part of evolving is to when you when you find yourself being stuck, it's actually giving you information. Being stuck is not bad. It's not a bad or a good thing. It's just information like, huh, what is blocking me? What actually is going on? It's like, oh, maybe it is time to pivot. Maybe it is. Maybe I have outgrown this uh, way of doing business. So I just want to say thank you, Angie, for for modeling that for everyone here. Aww. Okay. Yeah. I mean, how boring would life be if we did one thing, you know? Yeah. It would be boring as fuck. All right. Uh, last rapid fire question. When you have 30 minutes of free time, how do you pass the time? Ooh, usually I'll go on a walk. I like being outside as much as possible. Yeah. Um, my lymph machine, I have this like little foot lymph machine. <laughs> I'm going to do some weird biohack. I'm going to like take some binders and go in my sauna. I'm going to, I'm going to biohack. If I have 30 minutes, like I'm going to, I'm going to stretch. I'm going to do some yoga. I'm going to jump on my mini trampoline, maybe go butt sun. Like I'm going to, I'm going to biohack. I love that. Yeah. So I, I love your, your recharging. In between yes, recharging the okay. holes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> clear, literally charging your ass. Okay, so <laughs> with, the, with the energy of the sun. All right, so I want to now segue into the say it out loud portion. And what I really want everyone listening to hear is this, is that our ability to be able to be honest with others really starts with our ability to be honest and truthful with ourselves, which is why I want to ask these questions. Angie has no idea what I'm about to ask, but I trust that she's going to be as honest as possible because I, I don't have people on here that I, I don't feel are authentic. So here we go. Uh, Angie, when did you learn, uh, and, and obviously this could have changed, uh, but when did you learn that it was safer to lie than it was to say things out loud? Oh, that's interesting. And if you obviously don't have an answer, that's fine too, because, you know. Yeah, what do you mean by that? That's a great question. I feel like, okay, thank you for asking for clarification. Um, like there are parts of ourselves that we're willing to show others, uh, but there are some that we still keep hidden, right? And those parts of ourselves that we still keep hidden, when did you learn, if there are any parts of you that you don't show currently, wh why? Or, or did you learn at some point that, oh, maybe it was safer for me to keep this part hidden instead of showing other people? Like, is there still a part of you that maybe you don't share with other people out loud and say oh, out loud? Oh, that's fascinating. At first, I was going to say, I, I'm grateful that I've, uh, I think good parenting changes the world, right? And I'm grateful that my mom was always a great, uh, she allowed me to just be me and, and, and to self-express and just to be crazy and wild. And so I think a lot of people, when they ask me about authenticity and authenticity and what's the secret. And it's like, dude, I don't have like a course for you or a four-step program. If I was really fucking honest, my, I, I was raised in a, it wasn't perfect shit. My parents had a horrible divorce. My dad is a whole nother episode for another day. And he's not my be best friend, but, um, but you know, I, I would say my mom, at least they, they did a good job of a safe space to just, just be whatever. And just like, be wow. it just accepted, like whatever you want to do or be like, let's go, like, just go be it. And so I've always kind of been, I've mm -hmm. always felt self uh, safe pivoting and, and being expressive and changing my mind and dropping out of college and being in debt. Like I just always have felt like at the end of the day, I could still call her and she'd be like, all right, Ange, it's fine. Like you're, I know you're just going to figure it out. You always do. You know, there was never this pressure to be somebody or be a certain way. Um, so I think that that was really healthy for me. And I, I really hope to give that back to my kids one day, but you know, in the online space, when I first started my brand, I was mm. 19, I'm 32 now. So mm -hmm. I've been sharing my life in a sense publicly for what, 12, 13 years. Of course, when I was from 19 to 24, I definitely felt like it was safer to be more polished and, and I could, I couldn't show myself online unless I like had my hair perfect or was looking like a fucking news reporter with a stick up her butt, like trying to be like, you know, Friggin' if I'm not over and I'm not perfect, then I can't show up online. And so I think the first few years I felt like that was safer. 
until I realized it was just so exhausting to fake it. And I remember the day I just sent out an email with poop jokes and I just started like saying unfiltered shit and swearing and just being who I am. And, and I was like, you know what, this is probably going to be the end. Like I, I, they're not going to follow. And if anything, it actually, it increased and it Mm -hmm. then grew. So it's like, that was the pivotal moment of when I said it out loud, it actually grew the, the relationship with my audience and then the size of the audience. But it's funny that I thought that was the thing that was going to ruin it, but I was just so sick of faking it. I literally would, before I did my Facebook live videos, I would like say to my friends, I'm like, do I need to have like a makeup artist come over? So I look perfect on my Facebook lives. And like, wow. that's so stupid now. Cause now when I think about it, I'm like, why was I doing that? Like, why did I think I had to be a certain way? But you know, for a lot of like the, the wellness or the marketing space or the coach space, there is a little bit of like this facade and everyone's got their like fake private jets. And, you know, there's like a, Oh, my life has to look perfect. You know, she rented it. You know, it's like, there's like the, there, especially for 14 to 2014 to 16, there was like this big facade and I lived in LA and I was hanging out with girls who like, that was like, what was we were doing. And now I'm like, I could give two shits less. Like, I don't, I don't want that. And so it's interesting that, uh, yeah, for a while I was afraid to fully be that, but now it's my commitment to like, just say it out loud because you realize with an audience, like they're going to, they're going to kind of feel it sooner or later. So if you fake it, you're, you're just delaying, uh, you're delaying it. You're not actually going to be able to hide it that long. They're going to eventually find out like it, that'd be like me hiding that. I like, like poop jokes or I'm, I'm weird. Like if I acted serious on the internet, you'd eventually be like, this isn't her, you know? So <laughs> you want to know something? I don't know. Maybe I could fake it and be serious. I don't know. No, it's, it's, I'm actually really surprised that you were like that because I see you now and obviously so, so it's been an evolution. You've been in business for 13 years. Like I would hope that you would have, you know what I mean? Cause I see you now and it's like, what you see is what you get, you know, in full transparency. What you see is what you get. It's true. What you see yeah. is what you get with you. There's no, like, that. I'm not wondering what is she like? No, this is who you are. Like, it's just, it's, yeah. and for me, as someone who actually grew up having to interpret the adults in my house, because no one was just forthright and honest in my house growing up, which is where Say It Out Loud was born, because I used to literally mediate my parents when they were fighting. I would say to my dad, okay, you say it out loud. You tell mom how you feel. At four years old, no one should be mediating their parents, by the way. Oh, wow. but, uh, so I spent most of my life trying to interpret what people were saying. And that's why it's like, when someone is just, straight up who they are, I feel so much calmer. I'm like, oh, safe. Yeah. I feel safe. I feel safe, you know? Um, and I, yeah, that's really beautiful. Cause like what I say, I'm it's, it's what I'm saying. Yeah. And I feel like, um, I don't have to think tw- I don't have to work hard. I don't have to like dig into my intuition. Like, no, she is who she is. I, don't, I wouldn't need to be so hyper attuned to my intuition. If people were just who they are, you know? Yeah. That's so it. true. It's, it's crazy. But you know, I was, I was 19. I mean, gosh, when you're a woman and you're 19, I feel like I just now this year feel like I'm like, really like, okay, I know, like I'm in my body. I know who I am. Like, you know, I feel like you really start to just like come into yourself in your late twenties, early thirties. So I just, I'm not, I'm not surprised that at 22, I was self-conscious of people judging me about certain things mm-hmm. on the internet. And now I realize they don't care. Like they're not looking at me and thinking that as much as I am. So it's like, who the F cares? But when you're in your early twenties, I mean, gosh, as a woman, you're so insecure, you know, you pick yourself apart. So, so I know you, I know it, it was very brave of you to share poop jokes to your email list. Is there something recently and now you have your debut, is there something that you've been wanting to say out loud, but have not And you'd like to say it here. Anything that's on your heart. Oh my gosh. Let me think. Mm. Yeah. Take your time. Wow. That's a really good question. Like something I've been wanting to say to my audience or. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah. Anything. It's like, just what, yeah, let's, yes, let's just do that because a, a, a lot of our, my listeners here, I know they, they want to create content. They want to be confident on camera. They, they want to b- bring more of themselves into their business and not just have it be so one dimensional. Right. Or it could be in your personal life. I mean, my, I'm, we're, we're here for all of it. Yeah. It's interesting. I, don't, I think a lot of it, I guess a lot of it, you know, I, I think a lot of it is, um, being so like crunchy and holistic and uh but then I, <laughs> you know it's like sometimes you're like oh my god people are gonna think this is so extra but it's like no it's what i believe and i, I like and I, I like that about myself and I, I shouldn't have to change because one person's like oh my gosh you're crazy on the internet and you know i just released an episode on like home birth and i know of course with that i'm gonna get some woman who's like this is reckless i can't believe you think women can have a baby in a bathtub in her house it's like yeah 20 of my but like 
friends have just did it, just did it. You know, it, it's possible. People in India have babies in huts. Like yeah, to this day. So I think that little <laughs> yeah. I was nervous to post that episode yesterday. I'm like, Angie, why do you care? Why are you nervous to press post on this episode? Because I was nervous of being mom shamed and I'm not even a mom yet. And I'm like, wow, you know what? But so I just said it. I said it in the intro. I'm like, I'm nervous. I'm nervous to be mom shamed. And it's like little stuff like that will still get to me. But I need to realize that I can't make everyone on the internet happy. And, and I, I believe that the best creators like share their beliefs in a way where it's like, even if you don't agree, that's cool. Like, that's fine. We can still hang out. You don't have to love everything about me to still get value out of my content, you know? So I think that's always going to be the biggest struggle for me is there's people who I follow. who I don't love everything about them either, but I'm like, Oh, that's that, but that's interesting. So I know if people are like, Oh, she's, you know, I'm obviously like, you know, a lot of the shit that went down the last few years, I'm not in favor of a lot of it. Mm -hmm. And I'm super passionate about medical freedom and these things that like, if people on the internet really knew, but I don't, I don't share that part of my life Mm -hmm. because it's like, "Eh, I'm here to be a respite. I'm here to create comedy. I don't want to be the news. People can go watch it if they want. I don't want to be that. So I stay away from all that, but it is a part of me. That's like, damn, I'm passionate about this. Like I want people to be healthier and take control of their wellness. Like I, it is a, it's, it's a hill that I want to die on. I think, and I want my kids to know that like, I was passionate about it, but, but then I'm like, eh, I don't want to get into it. Cause I don't want to deal with trolls. So mm-hmm. that's like kind of the, <laughs> what you're always dealing with is like, you don't need some Linda who's like, oh my gosh, you're the worst, you know, <laughs> she sounds like she's but like, soda. whatever you're going to get, you're always going to get a Linda. So I don't know. I think that's always going to be the struggle of anybody. But what I love is that you still shared it anyway. And I think that's what I want everyone listening is like, it's, you know, you can you can be like, oh, fuck, do I got to deal with the aftermath? You're going to probably deal with some aftermath. Who knows from Linda? But you still post, but you still shared the episode. And that's yeah. what I really want to hit is like, you can still have that trepidation or that fear of what people might say. But that still should not stop you. Like both can exist. Your creation can exist along with a little bit of fear. They can exist together. Oh, I, absolutely. And I think it's almost like it's cowardly for me to not. So I'm, I'm really stepping into those courageous conversations and realizing like if my greatest goal is to like when I close my eyes and I think of like my brand or like like the, the ethos of it and what I, how I want people to feel when they consume it. Obviously, I see them laughing, but I see women saying and, and I, they say this to me and I want this to always be the through line is like you're just like, you just don't give an F. Like, and I like that. I like that. I, Cause I've always, I've wanted more women to look up to who, who are like that, mm-hmm. who aren't overly censoring themselves, especially now in 2022. So there's a part of me that's like, stay safe, stay vanilla. Don't see anything that could maybe make someone even a little bit mad. Cause everyone's triggered by everything. And then I'm like, no F it. That's not life. We're, the world no. is like, there's going to be things you don't like. And you just keep walking by. Like we've gotten to this point where people are so overly sensitive. And so I kind of also want to be a voice of like, I'm either going to like go into that and be like a little baby about it or like why don't I own that like maybe maybe I I don't know Mm -hmm. right like I think it's gonna be I think you're always gonna you're always gonna win if you stay strong to that belief and so yeah for me it's like I I have to create interesting content you have to ruffle some feathers you just have to there's no way to create any interesting content whether it's comedy whether it's personal Mm -hmm. development you're asking big questions you're you're sharing beliefs you're sharing stories there's no way in that process of those courageous conversations that you're not going to get somebody who doesn't like it. And I've been really naive, to be honest, I've been really naive because I thought that everyone will always like it. And it, and it's just not Mm. the truth of the game. Once the bigger your audience gets, it's just a numbers game. Eventually you're going to get someone who's like, Oh my God, I'm so offended by this. And it's like, what? Like that wasn't the intention, but you don't realize that. So it's like, that's always what I'm working through is like the fear of getting bigger because I don't want to get more feedback. Yeah. So I, I kind of, am like nervous to get, bigger because I don't want to get, um, shit on the internet. But then I also realize, like, I don't know for every one Linda, there's like 50 other women who are like, dude, I like, I like that. You 50 Vasavis, like, 50 yeah, Vasavis. We're like, share that. That's cool. That's cool. Or like a woman who's like, Hey, you know, maybe I don't believe in that like home birth or whatever the heck it is, but like, that's really cool that you still shared it. Cause I can still respect that you are honest in your you. So I, I'm, I think that's my desire is like, even if someone doesn't love every single thing, maybe they could still be cool enough to be like, Oh, I like that you're you though, right? I think that's what it is at the end of the day. Like, even if we don't agree with people, it's like, we still like when they're just them. So it's how I feel about Trump and Howard Stern. Okay. So I may not like the policies. I may not like the delivery. They're both them for sure. But I can, at least what you see is what you get. I I mean, that's why he won last time. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, and that's how I feel. Honestly, when I look at your stuff, even you and I, I want everyone to like see you for who you are, because 
I love everything that you post. There's nothing that you've ever posted. Like, I, I like you as a person. But what I really like about you is that you are you. And I but and and I also want to say this because I think the fear that you shared is something that I'm also scared of, Angie, and I'm working through it in both money and love and visibility. Go figure, even though I help people with their expression and visibility, it is something that we have to work on every day. It's not just, oh, I've reached this top. I, I don't care what anybody thinks. No, I actually care very much about what other people think, but I, I care more about my opinion of myself. This fear of getting bigger, because you're already at, you know, how many, how many millions of downloads on your podcast, your Instagram following, your this and that, and I can eat just hearing you say like, yeah, sometimes I do fear getting bigger because it's like you're opening up the doors for even more. But it's like, but that's why, you know, all this work that you're doing on maintaining yourself, all your biohacking, I think it's, I mean, like all of it, I feel like it's pre prepping you to gain even more visibility. You know what I mean? And it, th that fear is real about yeah, getting- Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's, it's so real. Uh, yeah, I probably should share this more, right? It's like love is pain. It's like somebody saying, well, I don't want to go fall in love because my partner eventually, what if, what if they die or they leave me? Well, so you, are you just not going to be in love then, right? It's like me saying, I don't want to have impact because with impact comes criticism. Okay, well, then you're not going to have impact. Then like, don't do the shit. Constant, don't do it's, it's the constant struggle <laughs> yeah. of a human. I'm like, I'd rather just hermit in my house and do nothing so that nobody can hurt me and no one can leave me a mean comment. But then I'm like, but wait, you have, you have this passion you want to share with women and you want to help them. So isn't that mean to do to the people who you could be helping? Like, it's this constant yeah. mind F of like, shit, and then stepping into comedy, you know? I mean, I, comedy is truth plus pain. So there's going to be a few videos that I know somebody, there was one who, a group of people took the wrong way and that was not the intention at all. And it really hurt because it was my first time as a comedian or, or attempting to be that it came out wrong. And it was one of the most painful experiences. And it was and, you know, some of my friends were like, dude, that's just part of the game. Like a thousand women loved it. 30 didn't dude. Like it's just, it's, it's truth plus pain. And the pre reason they probably didn't like it is because there was some truth in it. Like, it's just, it's just comedy. You're going to piss some people off, but it's like, I think the internet's a little different. Cause like, you know, a comedy show, you pay the ticket, you're in the room, you know what you're about to get, but on Instagram, they're just scrolling and maybe they didn't know yet. So they're like, ah, you know, so I don't know. That's where it gets a little bit more difficult digitally. But again, it's all, all of, all about like. I need to just know that at the end of the day, I still, I don't know. I have the confidence, I guess, mm -hmm. to, to, to know my intentions and know my heart. And I don't know. I don't know how standups do it. It's, it's like the most it's vulnerable thing ever. You're going to get somebody who's pissed off, but you know, it's cool. Side note. You're going to like this is the other day I went to stand up here in Austin. I went to go watch. And I loved that, that this guy at the end, um, like he said a few things that were just like, yeah, they're super out there and they were pretty intense, but he was like, guys, it was like dead silent. He's like, guys, you can laugh. It's okay. Like we're in a comedy club, like lighten up, you know? And it was just really mm -hmm. cool. He like slowly was breaking the ice and allowing them to be like this. We're laughing at this together. Like we're in this. And so I, I think that's the part that like, <laughs> We all need more of again. The fact that he has to, he, you know, basically know. like how the, I mean, people are afraid to laugh at stuff. And this is, this is the, I actually just, I wrote an email to my email list today. It's like, I feel like everyone is struggling with like bad girl or bad boy syndrome. Like we're all in school. We're getting graded. We're going to be a bad girl if we say this. And so in our personal life, we don't express our boundaries <laughs> on social media. We don't say certain things because we don't want to be canceled. And that's impacting our bottom line because maybe if you were more of yourself, maybe your sales would pick up. Like who knows? Like it's all connected. So I, I, I wrote this to my email list and I was just like, I, I feel like so many people walk around, they're so afraid of getting in trouble. Like I was at the gas station and I asked the cashier, I just said, excuse me, ma'am, I had a question. And she just looked so nervous. And I was like, no, you're okay. Like people are just so afraid of fucking up, you know? And I just want to say, we're not in school. We're not going to be sent to the principal's office. And that's, yeah. that fear is real. Wow, that, amen. Yeah, he was like, dude, it was self debt He was literally making fun of himself and his, and his story and his race. And like, just like, it just kept going in this crazy spot, but he was making fun of it himself. And he, you could tell he was like, guys, I'm the one making the joke. You can yes. laugh. I'm, it's okay. You're not going to offend me right now. Like, it was so weird to watch the psychology of the room and be like, wow, we've lost the ability to do that. Even in 2015, we could all laugh together about things. And so, yeah, I think, I think even more than ever, we need to, uh, I have to almost just be authentic, like unapologetically authentic right now, because I think hopefully then I can inspire other women to be like, yeah, you know what? Screw it. Like we can't all be afraid anymore. We can't, we just can't. Yeah, no, we just, we just can't. So I want to ask you, um, okay. What is the most, 
I'm really bad at segueing. I'm learning to get better <laughs> from questions. No, there, we don't need segues. Fuck segues. <laughs> Sometimes I'm brilliant, but my throat is just like shot. I'm like, okay, let's just get to the next question. Yeah. What is the most badass thing that you were most pr- most proud of saying out loud? Is there anything recently, personally, maybe setting boundaries or managing expectations or in your business? What's like something recently that you've said that you're like, I'm so proud of myself for saying this out loud? Wow. That's such a good question. Dude, I'm loving this format. Thank you for my words of affirmation. I know. I love it. Oh, my God. I love it. It's so good. I'm like, no one's ever asked me this. You know, what's interesting is uh, something I'm really proud of is. Yeah, you know, yeah, I won't won't say business because I know we've talked a lot about that right now. I mean, there's there's things I've done that like, yeah, I'm proud. But to be honest, I'm proud of my relationships in my life. I'm proud of my close girlfriends that I've cultivated over the last two, three years and, and the intention and the energy that I put into that. And, um, I'm getting more bravery around having the courageous conversations with people who I love. Uh, I had a close girlfriend who, uh, this is like so funny and specific, but maybe a woman will relate to this. Uh, and it's so petty and silly, but it's, it's not, but, um, I, I think she forgot or whatever. We got into a whole thing, but I, I wasn't invited to her bachelorette party. And it was like, so heartbreaking because she's one of my dear friends. And I was like, wait, what? And I was so nervous to even bring it up and Mm -hmm. to say anything. Um, and I finally, it was just, it was on my chest and it was like eating me alive. So I finally just like got into my heart and reached out and I was like, Hey, I'm not mad. I'm just sad. Like, this is really painful. I, I really thought I'd be part of this experience in your life and just like let it out. And I was thinking, wow, damn, I said to Clay, I go, me at 27 wouldn't even have done this, but me at 32, I have the, cur- the courage now to like sit in my body and like take a second and be like, I'm safe. No matter what happens, I'm safe. I know, I know my heart. I know she loves me. This must have been a mistake. I'm going to be honest. What do I have to lose? Like, I, I never used to be able to do that. I was definitely more like nervous and, mm, and I don't know if I'm going to say it now. I'm like, one of the coolest parts of maturing is like just being able to sit someone down and we went to lunch and I just looked her in the eye and I was like, Hey, I'm really hurt. Like, I'm really sad. Like this sucks. And I got to tell you, and I just wouldn't have been able to do that even three, four years ago. So I was like, when I left, I was like, damn, even if like her response wasn't necessarily what I fully wanted, it was interesting. Cause I'm like, that's so cool that I've built the courage to be able to have what I call courageous conversations where it felt so scary, but I'm like, man, that's, that's what life's about. Just sometimes calling it out in a nice loving way, but like, why not? It was, I've never, I've never been that girl. I'm not like miss, like, I will not like bring things up. I'm like, I'm, what is it? What do they call that? Um, uh, Uh, non-confrontational. Yes. I'm very non-confrontational. So for me to be like, Hey, I'm really hurt. This sucks. Like, can I just, can we just get this off my chest? It felt so good. So I'm, I'm really proud of that. That to me is like a sign of, I guess you could say some growth. I hope. (laughs) I'm proud of you too. And what I hear is it's less about the bachelorette party. I mean, yes, that sucked, but it was more about you bringing it up because you value the relationship more than you value being resentful, right? Like it's, you know, because, because that shit will stew. You will oh, stew. It's and I want to share this. Actually, this morning, I had a conversation with a girlfriend who a lifestyle choice of mine that you know, it's been a, I'm not ready to share it like on podcasts or whatever, a lifestyle choice of mine that I made. And she saw that yesterday. And instead of coming to me to talk to me about it, she went to a friend to talk about it on the boat. When we were all on a boat yesterday, like right, right in front of my face, you're talking about me to somebody else because you're worried about something about me. So I talked to her today. She's a good friend of mine. I've been with her for maybe three years now. And I said to her, Hey, uh, I just want to let you know, because I'm, I, I feel myself starting to get resentful and I care about you. If, if, if you have a question for me, if you're concerned about me, it makes more sense for you to come directly to me than to go to a friend of mine that you just met. Well, you know, what can she tell you about me? Come to me. And she was great. My, my friend was awesome. She, she, she owned it. She took responsibility for it. Uh, it was a great conversation. And even though this is the Say It Out Loud podcast, people often look at me and they think like, oh, I'm, I have no problem. No, I'm a Taurus. I'm actually very, I, I like stability. I do not like arguments. I grew up in a very argumentative household. And if I'm friends with you, my worst fear is that the friendship is going to end. So I don't like to bring confrontation to the table. So I know how much courage that took for you to sit down in front of someone and actually say that to them. Like that takes a lot of, that takes a lot of courage 
I was like, shit, I don't know if this is from doing like a little bit of plant medicine or microdosing. Uh, Cause it was right after I was microdosing mushrooms. I did like a 90 day yeah. thing where I'm like, is that what it is? It like turns you into like, they say like nothing's left in you, but truth. And like, it was weird. I just like sat down and just came out. And I was like, I was like, I was watching myself. I'm like, who's that person? I, yeah. that's not me. Usually I would just brush it off and forever always have this feeling in my heart of like, frick man, why didn't she invite me? This is weird. This is awkward. But instead I just owned it. And it's so cool. Cause um, the other day she voiced me and it was like the most beautiful voice note. It was just like, Ange, like, thank you so much. Like you taught me so much like, that day. And I've learned like, wow, I really need to be more just inclusive with my girlfriends. Like, I didn't even think that you wanted to go. And it was like this whole thing that like ended up being this really cool moment for us that I was like, wow, I'm glad I brought it up. Cause I always say doing the right thing will always be the right thing. Like you'll always mm. pay off in some way, you know? And it did now months later, she's like, damn, I, I thought about that. And like, it really was good, but yeah, I'm, I'm proud of that, man. It's hard. That's I'm one of the curious. hardest parts of adulting is relationship. <laughs> well, I, I, well, I mean, speaking of relationships, I was going to ask you this. Are you completely honest with clay about everything in your relationship? Like, is that one area of your life? Like within your romantic partnership, can you be completely honest about everything? Oh yeah. I mean, he, he sees all of it unfiltered and the crazy, the bad, the good. The yeah. Oh yeah. I tell him we've the, gone through the butthole. It. Oh yeah. Even this week, like he's, we've just had some crazy conversations of just so much. And I just say it, I just say it because I feel like sugar, especially to a guy guys are, I love you, man, but you're, you know, they're a little more simple minded. Like, just tell me what you're trying to say. Just like, they're very like one thing at a time, you know, they don't need to like be sugar coated. So I'll just say like, Hey, this is what I'm feeling. This is what I'm pissed about. And, um, he, I think he respects that honesty and it makes it easier for him to know what to do. You know? I love that. Yeah. Okay. So I, I wanted to just see like, is this, uh, it, so it's specifically with friendships. I get that too, because I don't know if you had any drama in high school growing up. I mean, it's like school was always very hard for me. I was never part of the cool girls club. I was one of only, you know, I, I grew up in an all white town. I was made fun of all the time. And the friendships, when I got, when I got, when I became friends with someone, I just wanted so desperately for them to not leave me because I didn't have friends growing up. So then I always held back on how I felt. So I'd harbor that resentment, make up a story about them and eventually blow up the friendship. That's how it, it's always gone. I just don't want to do that anymore. So all my friendships and, 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 you know, we have a lot of mutual people that we know, like Nita is one of my closest friends. I don't have issues with her, but if we did, we could talk. We could just, I, I, that's my commitment. I care more about our relationship than resentment because I will make up some fucking stories. I'm good at making up stories about you don't like me. You're like this. You're, I, or I suck. I did something like I'm, I won biggest storyteller in high school. Y'all, I wanted to win best hair, but I won biggest storyteller. And I, that's our ability as humans to make up stories. So I applaud you for having that courageous conversation. Yeah. It's like the story in my head is this, what's the story in your head? They say, that's how you should start the the conversation. Mm -hmm. And so even with her, I was like, Hey, I didn't put it on her right away. I was like, Hey, the story in my head is that you hate me or like, I'm, I'm suck. And like the, I literally said to her, the eight-year-old girl in me needs to hear your side. Cause she's like really hurt. The eight-year-old girl who at school wasn't included at the cool girls table. Um, so I, I'm embarrassed to even say that, but like, that's what's going on. I can tell this is like an inner child shit. And she's like, Oh my God. Okay. Like, let's talk about it. So I don't know. I'm like, I would want one of my girlfriends to be like, yo, dude, my inner eight-year-old is, is really sad. Like, tell me what's going on. And I feel like that they, sometimes it's just healing to hear, you know, and even with Mike, my brother, we own soul together. There's, there's times where he's really good at this, especially as a man, he's really good at just saying, Hey, um, I'm building some resentment right now because you haven't worked as much with soul mm -hmm. or you haven't done this. Uh, there was one time where he's like, we need to talk about just equity and we need to talk about stuff. And he did it in such a nice, calm, kind way. And, and I had to just like swallow my pride and say, yeah, you know, you're right. Like I haven't been showing up and, uh, I'm sorry about that. He's actually been one of my biggest teachers for, for awesome, courageous conversations. He's so good at it. And he, he, can is he single? Away. Sorry. What do you say? <laughs> he's actually not right now, but he, no, he's just really good at it. He's just good at being like, Hey, I'm, I'm hurt. Like I'm hurt. You haven't been showing up. Like, and I don't want to, this isn't like me yelling. I'm not yelling or anything like I, but I'm hurt. And what can we do to fix this? And it's like, wow. And so I have, I've had to learn like me at 24 and be like, no, shut up. Da, 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 you know, mm -hmm. but now I'm like, yeah, you're right. Like I haven't. And so I think that's part of maturing too, is knowing how to take it when someone's given it to you too. Like, you know what? I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. You're right. Because we all need to learn how to also say I'm sorry. So yeah. The ability to put aside that pride, be honest, like really say what, what can I own? Right. And not like, Oh, I didn't do anything. No, bro. It takes two people 
there's a two I mean I and that that's a hallmark of a great friendship if both sides are if you're willing to look like one person has to be honest the other person has to be willing to acknowledge and and I think also the one distinction that I want to make and I, I I know I'm veering off but intention versus impact like I cannot stand when people tell me that was not my intention I go listen I know you're not the devil I know you didn't have bad intentions but the impact of it still hurts right like there's like people still need to be willing to acknowledge the impact of their actions right and and that doesn't mean that um, you're a bad person or anything, but it's like, of course, we don't mean to hurt somebody else, but sometimes we don't even realize it and our actions do impact other people. So just be willing to clean that up and yeah. acknowledging it. Yeah, All right. I love that. Okay, what do you say out loud to yourself when you look in the mirror? I don't think I say anything. That's so funny. Okay. I feel like I should say shit. Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't really talk to my, you know, I don't do, I don't talk to myself in the mirror. Okay. Well, maybe you might, maybe you look in maybe. the mirror. I talk to myself like on walks and stuff and while I'm working out, like I've realized I've been really mean to myself lately. So I was like, even today I was like on my walk, I'm like, Angie, you should be nicer to yourself. I was just like, you suck. Like, you know, I was like getting into like one of those weeks where you're like, it's my period or something where you're just like a bitch to yourself. You suck. Yeah. yeah. Like this is never going to work. I'm like, what the frick? Who is that? So then I I've been working on that lately, but I usually do it when I'm in motion. Like when I'm on a walk mm -hmm. or I'm on the treadmill or I'm at a, in a workout class, like listening to the music, I'm like, yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> well, I encourage everyone and also everyone in the in the in my book coming out, uh, pre-orders will begin in August, by the way. Uh, I do say that every single say it out loud exercise in my book, because uh, this book is a, an alternative guide to journaling. I'm teaching you how to talk to every single part of yourself. Every single chapter in the book is dedicated to a different part of yourself. And I advise you to do all the exercises in front of the mirror because I think there's something very powerful. And I learned this from my father, being able to look at yourself in the mirror and really admiring and respecting your reflection, no matter what you're going through. Like when you're having your period, when you're feeling bloated, when you're worried about this, if you can still stand in front of the mirror and look back at yourself and have that pep talk, whatever you're saying out loud to yourself and looking at yourself in the mirror, there's something game changer. There's a game wow. changer. So I, Angie, I'd love for you to, if you're willing, just test it out, stand in front of the yeah. mirror and just be like, Hey, Angie, how are you doing? How are you feeling? And then talk back to yourself. Just try that shit out because, and I, there is a personal story to this. And I share this often on the podcast in my addiction to cocaine, I would not look at myself in the mirror because I felt so dirty and gross. Like I self, I was in ma massive wow. self-loathing. I would poop in the dark. I would shower in the dark, especially when I'm fucked up. I definitely wasn't looking in the mirror because my eyes were bugging out. But when I got sober, one of the first things that I started doing was looking at myself in the mirror to gauge my relationship status with myself. That's how I could tell whether my relationship with myself was getting stronger is how long could I stand in front of the mirror and look at myself and, and until those voices, Oh, you're so ugly. Oh God, look at your mustache. Oh God, look at those dimples. Look at your belly roll. Look at, I, and then I could, then I could start to pay attention to the mean voices. And then I can, it was, a, it's a lot harder to be mean to yourself when you're looking at yourself in the mirror. That's why I tell everyone. And that'll tell you a lot where you're at with your relationship with yourself. That's why wow. mirror work is very powerful. I'm yeah. going to do it today. I'm going to oh do it. Oh my God, I love, I love that about you. I love that you're going to, yeah, just tell me how it goes. I'd love I'm going to do it. <laughs> yeah. No, about, and, and, it, and it's, and I say this, personal growth and self-development is easy when you're looking fly as fuck. You have your hair and makeup done. You have your little backdrop. Try being nice to yourself when, when you feel like shit. That's when the real work begins. Yeah. Right? It's, of course we look good. I mean, we got, we got followers, we have this. Oh my God, look at how amazing we are. But like, when you feel like shit about yourself, can you still love yourself? That's, mm. you know, isn't that yeah. growth? Yeah. So wow. thank you for being willing to try it out. Yeah. Uh, last question is, what is something that you want to encourage our audience to say more of out loud? Um, ooh. I'm going to say the first thing that came to mind is, is say, say the weird thing that you're thinking. Mm -hmm. Um, we, we had a dinner last night The a friend was over and he goes, I got to ask you about your brain. How is it doing this? Like it, it went from like, somebody was telling a story. Then all of a sudden I'm like making a skit and about the cookies. And like, it just was a whole thing, you know, within like two seconds. And he's like, I've never seen, how are you doing this? I actually want to know what is the thought pattern that's going yes, I love idea, yes. concept, a punchline. Yes. Like, how are you doing it so quickly? Yeah. And I said, well, 
I don't know. I think I, I just see life as a skid. And then I, my brain like tied this to this. And then that was the pun. And the like, I don't know, I did a call back there. Like, I don't know. I'm just really kind of doing it. Yeah. And it was interesting because I said, but I think what I'm doing is, as I'm saying the awkward thing out loud that maybe a few other people at the table were thinking. And he's like, oh yeah. And so I do think for people who are like, people will probably DM me like, how do I be funny? And I don't think it's something you can really teach kind of ish, but I do think that a lot of times we do all have a little bit more of a comedian in us. And I think that that, that playful nature, even if you don't want to be a comedian, just for fun, just around your friends or your family or your kids, I think it say the weird thing that you're thinking, because that's actually what makes something funny. A lot of times it's just like, what the fuck is that? Or like, what do you, I, Oh shoot. I feel like this, or I don't know. Like I just, I just say it out loud. Yeah. And like that, literally I say it out loud. Yeah. And I think that's, what's always been like, people are like in shock for a second, but then they're like, Oh yeah, we all kind of were thinking that like, thanks yeah. for saying it, you know? So it's like, I don't know. I've always been that kid. Like at 15 years old, it's like, we're at the park and I go up to like some adult with my mom and I'm like, Oh, it's hot as butt crack out. You know, like, I don't know. I was just always that person. And so yeah. now it's like, especially once you get older, you just don't care anymore. So I almost say like channel your inner baby, like your inner grandma, your inner, like your, your 90 year old grandma who doesn't give two shits. And she's just like, going to say it. <laughs> I think you should just say it because like, why do we wait till our nineties? Just say it, say the awkward thing, say the weird thing. <laughs> your brain is absolutely brilliant. I, I, first of all, whoever asked you that question is, is, is so, uh... oh, do you know, Justin Resvani? I've heard of him. You guys I don't would get along well. Yeah. He's very funny, but yeah, he was like asking me that. And I was like, what a weird question. He's like, how does it help? What is it doing? I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. But what a great question because it actually helps you to kind of really slow down and because our minds work so quick, like the connections that I can make. And I was just going to say this. Okay. My, my brain just went in a different direction. You're an amazing conversationalist. Like there is not a dull moment with you at all. Wait, and, really? Are you kidding me? I, That's I mean, so nice. No one's I, ever told no, it's true. Like, what a great conversationalist. Like, I can, I'm always thinking, listen, I will, I'm going to share with everyone my, my biggest limiting belief that I had to work through in writing the manuscript. As I'm writing this, because I was diagnosed with bipolar disorder when I was 20. I was basically told my mind is broken. So I taught myself how to think. I taught myself how to talk to the voices in my head, all the racing thoughts in my head where it just became characters, right? I had so many thoughts, like that's the hallmark of mania is just all these thoughts. So instead of being controlled by them, I learned how to talk to them. And so my biggest fear is people aren't going to understand my crazy ass brain. They're not going to understand how I connect the dots. They're going to think I'm crazy. And on top of that, I have a label that basically tells me I'm crazy, right? I'm mentally ill. So I really appreciate your ability when I'm talking and I'm thinking like, does this make any sense to anyone? And you just pick up on it and you just keep talking. Like you're great at just, your brain works so quickly that you're able to connect a dot somewhere and keep the conversation going. And it's still rich. It's not like, you know, I've talked to some people on the show and they're like, yeah, that's great. Like, no, you actually have something to say in response to what I'm saying, not just a canned response of like, yeah, what the fuck? <laughs> Like what is I don't know. I maybe we're both crazy. I just you're no, easy crazy. to talk to because you also talk really fast and you can tell you're going through you're filtering through a little few different concepts and then you're like coming to a callback. Like that's how that's what comedy is, right? Like da -da 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 callback, da -da 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 callback. So it's like, I don't know. I think I've just always been that way. So like my friends that I like understand the most, like we literally cover 18 different topics in like 30 minutes. Like it, but it makes sense. And we're like, okay, we got through it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I can solve the world's problems, figure out like where to sh get an outfit, a new restaurant that I need to try. Yeah. Maybe a little bit of gossip. We try not to do that too much, but you know, just whatever. Talk about business stuff like all in one. I mean, it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. If you can't keep up, I don't know I mean <laughs> what to tell you. But okay. Uh, is there anything left that you have not said out loud that you'd like to say? What is left? Mm. <laughs> There's so oh, much more where that came from. Yeah. There's... I'm laughing because when I was little, my brother used to, Mike used to, Mike, Mark, Matt, whatever his name Matt. is. He, he used to tell me, he used to say, I'll pay you he in the back seat of the car. I was like five. He was like seven. He used to say, I'll pay you a dollar for every minute that you don't talk because you talk so much. And my mom would just be driving the minivan, like cracking up. And I turned around and I said, I'd rather talk than take your money. <laughs> so I just, and it's funny because now it's like my job to like be a podcast host. So it was weird when I was just thinking like, oh, no, that's good. But then I was like, Mike would be proud. <laughs> I love that. You, like, you Go ahead. Go ahead. He'd Sorry. be like, Angie, shut up. <laughs> Wait, no, no. But for real, do you have anything left unsaid? 
I feel like that was really juicy. I think the biggest thing is, you know, that the saying that I've been using a lot is owning your weird. And it doesn't necessarily, your version of weird doesn't have to be look like you or me. Like it can look like however they want it to look. And to me, the word weird just means different and odd and unconventional and unboxable. And I think with social, the irony, this is super meta, but I've lately been thinking like we're literally in boxes and then you're supposed to post the boxes and you're supposed to say who you are in a little box. It's like, mm, wow, making us feel very boxed in and like we're, we're all unboxable. So I want to like really encourage people. I'm almost in a season where I'm like F the niche, like just being so self-expressed and being who we are, I think is going to be the new wave of social. Not because I want you to get you know, make the algorithm happy, but because I think it's genuinely going to be the only sustainable way to mm -hmm. keep sharing who we are. And I'm calling it own your weird. And it's like being unapologetic. And, and I just think that that's going to be really healing and, and refreshing for a lot of us, especially on, on social. So own your weird and don't be a Karen. <laughs> don't be a Karen. Well, I, well, don't well, be, well, and if you want to cancel me after this episode, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't, I'm very lucky. I don't have a a cancel -y audience. I think they know by now what they're going to see with me, like the guests that I bring on, who I am. I mean, I have a, I have an episode from a few months ago where, um, I don't know if you know Monica Zanz. Uh, Monica, and, Monica and Jan. Who is that? Monica. Oh my gosh. Monica. Monica. Um, yes. well, Samson and Nicole are two of my best friends. But She's Mon really Oh, maybe. Yeah. Does she live here in Austin? Yeah. With her husband. The blonde haired woman? Yes. Like short, cute. She's yes. like in her fifties. Yes. Yeah, Monica. So Monica's really close to them and I know she's helped them out a lot. So yeah, but well, I, I, is, she, is she out there? No, what, what I'm saying is my audience will not cancel you because I literally, I don't think so. And if they do that, I, I don't know what to say. Guys, don't do that. Uh, what I was gonna say is a few months ago, I posted a podcast episode Monica came over and watched me take off. I had just met Monica at Nita's house. Monica came over and watched me take off my clothes in the mirror. So the name of that episode is called Naked. I had never had, I well, it's been a while since I've been laid. But besides that, I really was working on reconnecting and having a better relationship with my body. And we met, I had just met her and I said, you know, I had this thought the other day. I was standing in front of the mirror and I said, I need to be witnessed by a woman taking my clothes off because I have so much body shame mm. and I don't want to blame my mother. I mean, but I, I did grow up in a pretty conservative, traditional Indian household where our bodies are not something that we celebrate. Our bodies are something that we cover up because they're mm -hmm. considered dangerous. Men will look at you. Oh, it's your fault that the man's looking at you. So I learned that my body was dangerous or it's a weapon um, and it will, it will destroy. So I thought it would be powerful for me to have someone that I don't really know witness me to take my clothes off naked in front of the mirror and you know, she just happened to be the person. So she, and I did a whole episode on that. And what's powerful about that episode, everyone, and I'll share it in the show notes. It's great. Is that you can actually hear me talk so unkindly to my body and to, I don't really let anyone witness me and my self-loathing because it's so mean. Wait, are you recording it while you take your clothes off? Dude, the entire experience is recorded. Not video, no. Uh, but the audio. Wait, like, wait, you don't mean like in a sexual way. You mean like you're just standing like you would in front of a girlfriend. Like I get naked in front of my girlfriends all the time. I don't. I don't because I have. There's. A, I, I never felt the closeness with my mother. My mother, you know, and I understand. Yeah, my mom comes over. If I'm in the bathroom putting my changing into something else, she's, I'm, she's seeing it all. Like yeah. My no. girlfriend yesterday, she's like, oh, you have a hoodie? I'm like, yeah, here, take mine. I'm, I'm like. But I, I realize that's not everybody's experience. It's not everyone's experience. I did. My mother always covered herself up. So when I was younger, I was very free spirited. I would take my shirt off and I would dance in my bra. And my mom uh, let me know in her ways that she did not approve of that. So wow. I'm just learning how to undress in front of females. Like even like not in a sexual way. I'm into yeah. men, but my point with oh. women, I have no problem taking my clothes off for a man. Please dick me down. But when it comes to my female friends, oh my God, guys, it's been a minute. But when it comes to my female friends, I feel shy, but I love the female form. I think the female form is beautiful. So I thought it would be powerful to have someone that I barely knew come over. And now obviously Monica and I are good friends. I like, I'm going to start using her pool when she's not there. I'm just going to go to her house. We've become friends, but she came over and she talked to me through, I took off my clothes and stood there butt naked and she was just stood behind me, watching me. And we talked through every body part. And it was it was very new for me to have someone watch Oh my me. gosh, I'm gonna go listen to this right now, wow. Literally the behind the scenes, you're, 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 you can listen to, 
she comes over and she walks me through a grounding exercise. You'll hear the mean things that I say about my body and something about being Letting somebody witness me and my self-hatred for my body and just like the way that I talk, it it completely just, my shame shriveled. I've lost 10 pounds since that episode without doing jack shit. Okay, I walk and I go to yoga and do this. Yeah. I've, I've cut down on like how I eat and what I put into my body, uh, just really being more mindful. And I honestly believe it's because that shame that I've always held about my body and is it, oh, I shouldn't be sharing, that's shriveled. And so I have lightness now. And now I just want everything to feel light, including the food that I put in to my body. You know what I mean? It's like, wow. I've lost 10 pounds, just like that. Oh my gosh, this is like one of the most fascinating things I've heard in a long time. Yeah, I'll send you the I'll send you the link to the episode. Yeah, text, I'm like, I'm going to literally go on my walk and yeah. listen to this. Wow. Yeah, you can hear me in my self-loathing. It's uh, And, and I, that's why, y'all, inside my Say It Out Loud group, we begin August 5th. The beauty of my Say It Out Loud group um, is that it's, it's not like a business group. It's not like I'm going to help you with your business. It's really about learning to talk how to talk to yourself, but it's also being witnessed and honored by other people and just sharing yourself fully, not just, not just the shiny parts, but like allowing people to witness and honor you even in your shit. And that really creates a lot of space. And when you create that space within that does affect how you show up in your business. So, um, I'm going to put the link. If you want to join the say it out loud program, we begin August 5th. We have early bird pricing. It's 500 for the whole 12 weeks. I do have a payment plan. Uh, but yeah, definitely jump on it. I can't wait to see you inside the group program. We kick off August 5th, 12 weeks. Angie, how can, thank you. Uh, how can people, oh, and the, and the beautiful thing about this group, it's completely based off the methodology of my book. I have a methodology now. Who the fuck knew? I have a methodology. So, okay. So, uh, I, I, I'm a bitch with a methodology. I have, I have steps. I have steps. I never fucking steps. I guess I, I guess I broke this down. Okay. Angie, uh, what projects are you currently excited about? What do you have going on that you're excited to share that you want the people to know about? Yeah, we're just adding more fun products to soul soon. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, stepping more into, uh, yeah, some more comedy skit com content on reels and TikTok, and hopefully doing some ads with some fun brands and like just seeing where that takes me because I, I don't know. I just, I want to see where it goes. I, I, uh, want to see where, where that takes me. And then doing a lot of more wellness content on the podcast. So yeah, come say hi on Instagram, the podcast, come check it out. If you're, if you're into the weird, let's hang out. <laughs> okay. Well, I'll put all the information for soul CBD, for your podcast, for, uh, your Instagram in the show notes. I want, I have a really hard time saying goodbye. So do I. it's a little bit of my abandonment issues. Like I'll say bye. And then we'll talk for like another 20 minutes. Cause I legit don't want to be the first person to hang up. Uh, but you're a grown ass woman. You'll be fine. If we say bye. Yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to fully hang up on you. We will. And it's not a real bye. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. We'll, let's hang out. Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for uh, tuning into another episode of the say it out loud bye, podcast. Thank you, Angie, for coming on the show today. Woo.